Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, I'm Franz. This is Find Out Fridays. Uh, this is the weekly sesh where the younger devs, uh, all right, younger, the, the, the learning devs, we're all learning. I don't even know. Where some people ask questions of other people. And yeah. we see if we can come up with answers together. How about that? Like uh, so, Evan and Mike, uh, in your journeys through helping people in the public-facing community stuff, do you have a question that Corbin and Andrew can shed some light on this week? Yeah, so this week in the forums, um, kind of we, Mike and I, confirmed, and this seems like a good topic to, to check out. Um, so we were talking about um, permissions. And so um, kind of back in the day, um, there was kind of a way that you could assign permissions via XML. Um, and so we that was back in kind of the 5.6 version. Um, but now there are kind of better ways to do it. And some of the folks in the forums were saying, hey, does this XML solution exist anymore? You know, is that how it's done? And you know, so I talked with Andrew a little bit, and he was explaining kind of there are some better ways to do it now. So I thought it might be a good idea to take a second to kind of you know go over some of those you know better new ways, um, so we can share that with the community kind of in a more verbose way. Sure. Yeah. Um, so as a bit of a history lesson, like way back probably concrete prior to concrete five, like when concrete was a non-open source product of some variety. Um, we, when we created single pages, so when we added pages of functionality to a site programmatically by, you know, just, uh, we, we didn't even have a package format at the time, but you could add single pages through a, a dashboard page by typing in the path and then it would scan the file system for the path and say, oh yeah, I see, that dashboard, you know, widgets.php exists. So I'll add that to your site in the database and, and then it'll render the content there and it'll you'll add custom functionality to your site. Well, there were times when we wanted to add not only um, that functionality when you added the, the single page, but also set default permissions for it. So like sometimes this stuff was public facing, like it was, you know, a calendar for something. And, we wanted certain groups to be able to edit that page um, by default when you added it. So it's almost like a reusable piece of functionality like a package, but before we even had packages or anything. So literally at that point, the install routine for a single page would scan the file system, see if that path existed, and then just add the record to the database. So there was no way, there was no other code that ran when you did that. There was no package install method. There wasn't even a package format. So what we did at the time was say, well, if we want to add custom permissions to this, we'll add a, I think it was called access.xml or something into that folder, like at the same path. And then uh, upon running that install method, we'll check to see if that file exists. And if so, we'll We'll parse that file for, it was like super remedial format. It was like just uh, nodes of, of group names and then like three three Booleans, can read, can write, or can admin. And that was always a running joke as to what can admin even meant. <laughs> um, but it would parse that in and it would set the permissions based off of that. And that allowed us to set custom permissions before we even had code that ran when you installed anything. So fast forward to, you know, Concrete 5 or, you know, Concrete Now, like there's a million things that we can do to, to do this kind of stuff. Like, first of all, like we don't really even recommend installing single pages in this way. It's certainly something that's not going to go away. And if you need custom one-off single pages in your site, you can still install it from the single pages dashboard page without having to mess around with the package. But for anything that requires, um, you know, any kind of reusability um, or bundling anything more than just a literal single page or block type, like anything that is entangled in any way, whether it's permissions or multiple pieces of functionality, you want to have that be a part of a package so that you can have an install method that you can rely on running when you install the thing, which can take care of installing, you know, block types, single pages, you know, adding users and groups and all kinds of stuff, as well as setting up events and things and stuff we didn't have back back when we first did that. So 
somewhere along the line, the access.xml looked extremely antiquated. And also, it never kept up with permissions changes. So I think, you know, Concrete 5.5, 5, we overhauled permissions, or 5.6, we overhauled permissions to add a whole bunch of them and add all kinds of custom access entities so you could assign permissions to combinations of groups and deny permissions to certain users and all kinds of crazy flexibility. And that XML format was not going to keep pace with all of that, those pieces of functionality. So we just kind of, I think we pulled the code that actually scans single pages for those files. Like it's not anything that's supported anymore, but the vestigial permissions XML uh, method, I think still exists in the core with a note that it's deprecated and don't use it. <laughs> but you know, if there's code out there in the wild that does, like we didn't want to break it with when there was really no reason to. It's, you know, a method that's not that long. So um yeah, so that's kind of the history behind why that exists and why we had an XML format for it when we don't really have, we don't really do installs with XML. Like we have our content XML format. And we, but we don't automatically install from that necessarily. Um, and uh, we, and we certainly use that all over our own install. And we, we recommend devs do that in order to create a sort of static snapshot of the functionality they're installing. It makes it easier to develop, and they don't have to write a bunch of code. But you know, it's a, it's difficult to that format does not, uh, does not really support permissions yet. And I don't know if it ever will, because it's just so permissions are so beefy compared to the rest of the format. I mean, parts of the, the format are beefy as well. Like if you ever look at the content XML format for building like the home page, like it's very, it's long because it has to describe all the blocks and all the areas. But we just never got around to doing that with permissions because um, I don't know, whenever that XML format is meant to be somewhat portable, and it's also meant to be generatable from a from a site in order to move it to a new platform. And it's been our it's been our understanding that when you're doing that, more often than not, you're not necessarily looking to translate permissions one to one. Like you don't necessarily want to exactly mirror the permissions of your old site. You might be setting up something completely different. You might be installing a theme on a site that you don't as sample content and you don't even know what permissions the host site has set up and you don't want to mess around with them either or assume anything about them. It's sort of up to the admins of the site to set those things up and you don't really want to get super opinionated. Um, like just because I've set it up so that a certain group can't edit a block on a certain page and I want to export that content for some other purpose doesn't mean I want to export all of that, you know, host specific implementation about which groups can edit which blocks. So we haven't moved that into the XML. And so instead we kind of rely on a PHP API for setting permissions uh, when we when we do need to programmatically set permissions on content. But on a positive note, there is a way to do that pretty, pretty well. Um, and we use it during our own install process. And I can even show that. Um, OK, can you see my screen? Yes. Sweet. OK, so yeah, there's a method that gets run when the default install takes place that is responsible for basically making sure a standard concrete site is set up with sort of the ground level permissions it's going to need. You know, you you could comment this method out and the site would still have all the content. And if you were logged in as an admin, you'd be able to do everything because the admin supersedes those permissions just in case you get your site into a set of permissions that make it impossible to even access. We we wanted to be able to make that impossible for you. So, um, but if you were to not apply these permissions, you would have a site that nobody could do anything with except the admin user. Um, not see it, not edit it, not, not add users, not do anything. So this is how that works. So, you know, at the beginning, you can see we use the group method to uh, get by ID method to get our three groups. Um, we've got a guest group, registered users group, and admin group. Um, 
you know, just as an aside, it's a little weird that we have those faux groups, the first two, like the admin group is a is just a user group that's added in the system and like any other group. Um, it's got permissions assigned to it to give it these elevated levels of access, but it's just, it doesn't have anything special about it. It could be as easily be called, you know, super editors are awesome, awesome people. It doesn't, by its administrators group does not have the same sort of implicit magical permissions that the admin root user has. Um, so that's important to remember. Um, and then there's also, but then it's, it is weird that um, we kind of have groups for guests and registered users. Um, and those are, those are groups that are in the system, but they're sort of hidden from you at um, when you're working with concrete, you don't see them in the user interface unless you're, unless you're assigning the, uh, unless you're assigning those groups to a permission. Um, and this is just sort of set during the concrete running life cycle. So if someone comes to the site and they don't have a session, they're not logged in, they are magically a part of the guest group. So that's um, that's how that works. And if any user who is viewing the site and is registered is magically a part, implicitly a part of the registered users group. Um, and that's kind of been the way it's been since the very, very beginning. Um, if we were to redo it again today, we'd probably have different conceptions for that. Like we wouldn't use groups for that. We would have what we call permissions access entities instead, um, which are meant to handle those more ephemeral concepts, not literal user groups. But we didn't have that. So that's why we have these, these groups at the top here. Um, and then you can see down here, I might even just skip this one because it's not as practical an example. But um, here you can see we um, how to assign permissions to a given page. So you can see here that um, you know if you start a concrete site with no permissions assigned anywhere, it's going to be pretty bad if you do not assign the ability to view the login page because then no one will ever be able to view the login page in order to log into the site to be able to you know do anything. So the very first page level permission we set during this routine is we get the login page um, by its path and it should always be there. And then we run this assign permissions method, which is a page, which is a uh, method on the page object, but it's part of a trait. So there's this uh, permissions assignable object trait, I think is what it, I, it's called, something like that, that adds a couple methods to anything that it touches. Um, and assign permissions is one of those. And it takes, um, its first object that, that, it, that it takes is either an access entity or a group or a user. Um, and then the second is a uh, an array of permission handles. So view page is a permission that's already been installed by this point. And so what we're doing here is basically saying, hey, the guest user group, which encompasses anyone, anything. So it encompasses registered users, you know, the root user, anything, as well as just visitors to a site can view this page because without that, we would not be able to uh, let people log into their site as well. And we do the same thing for register here. Um, register is an interesting case because you, you can see that we always allow you to view that page through permissions. But when you get to that page, there's a secondary method in the controller that actually checks the setting on your site that says, hey, is this site actually set up to allow users to register? Like is public registration something this site is configured to allow? And then if not, it will act as though that page cannot be viewed. But permissions wise, that page is also uh, accessible to uh, the guest group as well. Um, same with the page forbidden page, which is a pretty funny bit of logic there, but it's the same sort of story. Same with page not found. These are all actual real pages in the system that render in, spe in special points and they need to be viewable by the user, um, by the guest user. And then you can see, um, just before I take questions and hop off here, we've got some other, um, we've got some more um, interesting examples. We, we actually take the dashboard and we assign view page permissions to just the administrators group, which is what's assigned to G3 up here. And that's what keeps you know, just regular registered users from being able to use the admin tools that are found in the dashboard. And then finally, uh, here there's a, a special page found at drafts. That's where all of your drafts of pages that you create before they get published somewhere on your site, that's where they live. And uh, we set 
uh, administrators to be able to do a bunch of admin -y stuff on those pages um, and, uh, and as well. So that is kind of, that's kind of how this, this all works. And the assign permissions method is available on a number of different objects. I think it's, um, yeah, we can probably figure out how it's, how it's available. So it looks like it's part of the board object, the calendar object, page, page type, um, file folder nodes, and then even the workflow object, which is funny. Um, so not so much at the file level or the user level, um, because users actually, their permissions don't work directly on a user. And files are actually, their permissions are handled by the um, the file node that they, uh, that they um, that they use. So whenever you're setting a file, whenever you're setting permissions on a file, you're actually setting it on a file node. Um, so anything that uses those um, those nodes, like um, topics or files or things like that, um, should be uh, they should be assignable. Their permissions should be manipulatable in using this method the same way. So um, that's kind of the way that we handle programmatically assigning these permissions now, as opposed to using the XML. Um, the XML method never had this level of uh, flexibility. Um, you can even see that we have a method that um, you can even set it up so that by default, you know, when you're assigning permissions in this way, we they trickle down, but you can also set this cascade to children to false and it will set it on the current node, but then it will update all the child nodes of whatever object you're working with to not be affected by your change, which can be handy in some pretty custom, interesting situations. So yeah, that's kind of how that stuff works um, and why it works that way. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. It's it's interesting to see the, you know, the evolution from XML to, to yeah. this more programmatic approach. And it, and it helps, I think, people to conceptualize, like, you know, now the XML is more about kind of content export and the reasoning why you don't want to, you know, make it so inflexible, uh, you know, to include permissions because then you're kind of requiring it. One question I had for you, um, and it's kind of a specific one from an, actually a different uh, situation. I was working with another uh, user. Um, so I know that there's um, so there's file folders in the file manager, which is a relatively new addition in the kind of you know concrete history here. And then there's the file uh, permissions themselves. You can put permissions on a folder and you can put permissions on a file as well. And one thing I was noticing as I was kind of rooting around looking at the permissions files was um, there's like an inherit thing um, where it's, I feel like, I guess what I was curious about was like, I don't think you can call like permission key stuff for files on file folders. Cause I, cause file folders have their own permission keys, but but then I saw this inherit method that seemed to be mapping the file permission keys to the file folder permission keys. And granted, I did not dive probably as deep into it as I ought to, but I, I just thought I'd throw that out at you. It's like, does that ring any bells or? Yeah, um, that is interesting. Uh, yeah, so the way generally how that works is um, we have to make specific permissions records or permission keys with their own unique handles their own mm -hmm. unique sort of identifying strings like those have to be unique across um all object types so um and visualizing it is probably makes it a little easier to understand what i'm saying um yeah so like this is the definition of all permission keys that are in the system. So not what they apply to exactly, but just the list of all the things we track, all the ways in which we track permissions. So yeah. view page, view page versions, and you can see the category here is what object this key applies to. So view page, you know, you can kind of infer from its name that it imply that it um, refers to page. Um, and then if you go down to here, it's this, this, this is sort of what you're talking about. So there's, there are all these 
file, there's these file folder categories over here. And so these are the permission keys that apply to those. So there's view file, folder file. So this is, can I view the files within this file folder is what this is saying. It's like a Dr. Seuss type of type of thing going on. Um, and, uh, and then here, down here, we have um, a permission for the file category, which is just view file. So it is true, like if you, were to get a file object and say what you would want to do to if you were checking using custom permissions checks can can the current user view view this file um you would want to say can view file and you would change this to camel case with the um and with can in front of it so can view file automatically behind the scenes translates to running a this permission key check against whatever file you're working on but it's true if you had a file folder instead of a file and you ran can view file on there um you would get probably a, a weird exception that didn't make sense to you saying something like you know view file does not exist as a permission key for this object or something like that or something even more esoteric um and so yeah it does matter what um method you call however just to make it more um complicated there is also this permissions response class which is the sort of first line method for or the first line object that you get when you create a when you run a um, permissions method on something so behind the scenes you've got this um sort of catch-all permissions checker class um which you see sprinkled throughout the code as you know just new permissions or new checker in more re more recent code that we've written it used to just be new permissions with no namespace now it's an alias class that aliases to this checker method and then if you from that object, you see can view file. But what it's doing behind the scenes is it is taking the object you're passing to it and say, give me what is called a permissions response class for this object. And so within the file um, class, there is this method get permission response class name. And so whenever you're working with file, it will give you an object of the concrete core permission response file response method back and then if you're working with um the uh file folder it will give you a concrete core permission response file folder response method back and that you know behind the scenes it doesn't really matter because both of those just translate their calls into checking the the permission key but what you can do is define special intermediary methods here so this is what's what's kind of amusing about this here just to take this whole thing full circle you can see we have some ancient methods here can read can write and can admin like these have been around since the very beginning and when we moved to our more modern um our more modern permission system we had tons of legacy code that just checked can read it's probably still in there um or can write and so we couldn't kill those so what we do behind the scenes is we map those to the relevant permission key that we want to check at the file um, the file response. So if we look at file folder response, I bet we will see some other other convenience methods that do the same thing. So um, those can oh, I guess so can read is not actually a thing, but um, but it is um, it is funny. You'll see methods around here that actually. Um, that actually do allow you to sort of share the same permissions method across different types of objects. So while there is no view tree node permission that is, you know, shared across file folders and topic trees or whatever, within the response method itself, there is a can view tree node method that behind the scenes um, translates that into search file folder. So when I when I pass a folder to the permissions checkers and then say, can I view this tree node? It will, behind the scenes, it will say, well, since this is a file folder, I will check against this permission. And I'm willing to bet that there's going to be half a dozen other can view tree nodes throughout the site that translate their, their functions in a similar way. So when you're working with a, uh, um, like, uh, express folder, you also use can view tree node, but when, uh, 
Express works, it actually uses a different permissions key behind the scenes. And so what this lets us do is it actually lets us use the same like UI for all of the stuff where it, while there's different permissions actually powering it behind the scenes. So like just to I, I hope this should work. So if I go into the topics and I edit permissions here, you can see we've got permissions for this note are inherited from categories. And if I go into file manager and I look at um, the uh, file permissions here, you can see this is actually the same UI as this. Um, it's just loading its permissions from its object and it can check its permissions um, using the same, the same shared code, even though behind the scenes, it's using different permissions keys to kind of compute what it's doing. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of, it's pretty in the weeds, but hopefully it kind of makes it clear that like, if you're working on custom permissions, you are going to need to define your own permissions, but you can also define these classes that make it so that you have more flexibility than just being, you know, rigidly defined by what keys you, you create. Like even with this, there are tons of times when we actually create custom response classes for objects that don't even have their own permissions. We just put methods in here because it's a good pattern to say, if I'm checking permissions on something, I'm always going to be using this checker class and I'm always going to be, you know, running them again, my permissions checks the same way, regardless of, of how my code is written. So that's kind of how that stuff works. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, that was a weed question from the yeah. Show. So yeah, yeah, that was that was gonna happen. So awesome. Um, well, um, this is good. But I know we're running up at time here, but this has been really informative. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments about about permissions? I think once again, it's a lot to digest in thirty <laughs> minutes. But it's definitely become a lot more complicated from the the early days. Yeah. Yep. How sophisticated. <laughs> yeah same same yeah same <laughs> side of the same coin i think yep nice all right well uh in that case thanks everyone for coming to find out friday thanks andrew for teaching us and uh yeah we'll see you guys next week sounds good thank you thanks everyone thanks andy see ya